Welcome. All right, so what I have here is x squared plus 6x plus 15 equals 0. And in, in this case, you might say, well, why don't I just factor this, right? But we look at this, and this becomes difficult to factor when I'm trying to determine what two numbers multiply to give me 15 but add to give me 6. And it's not even that it, it's hard to factor, but it cannot be factored. So the other option you, know, you can look into uh, would be applying completing the square. And if you don't like completing the square, then quadratic formula might be a good option for you. So let's go back, make sure we have it actually in our standard form, which I keep on erasing after every problem I do. So the first thing I want to do is identify my a, b, and c. So a in this case is 1, b is 6, and c is equal to 15. I'm just using them as how they relate to the standard form. So now the next thing I need to do is, um, since it's not factorable, that still we have a lot of different types of solutions that this graph can have. Um, so therefore, I want to be able to determine what is going to be uh, the solutions by applying the, by figuring out the value of the discriminant. So the determinant is b squared minus 4 times a times c. Now what I'm simply going to do is take those values and plug them into that equation. So therefore, I'll have 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 15. OK? Well, 6 squared is going to be equal 36. And negative 4 times 15 is going to be 60. So I'm going to have 36 minus 60. Well, that's going to equal a negative 24. Now, since that's a negative, um, we know that there's going to be no solution in terms of the real number solutions. However, there are going to be complex solutions. So we are going to want to continue to be able to see what exactly are going to be our imaginary roots, or solutions in this case. Um, so what I'll have here is let's go ahead and figure out the rest of the quadratic formula. So x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a. So now that I know my discriminant is negative 24, notice that that goes there. So I can just go and plug that in as well as my other two values for a and b. So x equals opposite of b, which will be negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 24 all divided by 2 times 1. Now, it will become important to make sure we can simplify the square root of 24, or the negative 24. All right, so when going through your imaginary numbers when doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor, I'm going to break this up into, I want to see what squared number that I know, what is the largest squared number that I know of that divides into 24. And that number is going to be 4. So I'm going to rewrite this as a product of 4 times 6 times negative 1. Now remember, we cannot take the square root of negative 1. That's why I'm factoring that out so I can rewrite that as a product. I can take the factor of 2, or the 4, which will be 2. Then I have to leave the square root of 6 out there. And instead of leaving the square, the square root of negative 1 under there, I'm going to rewrite this as our imaginary unit, i. So therefore, my now, my new discriminant is going to be 2 square root of 6, i. And that's important as far as me being able to simplify my solutions. So I have x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 6 i all divided by 2. So now what I can do is I can actually divide my 2 into both of these terms. You've got to make sure you div if this is all divided by 2a. So when I divide 2 into 6, or negative 6, I get negative 3 plus or minus, that goes to 1, the square root of 6. Ah, don't want the i under the square root the square root of 6i. So those are going to be my two solutions, which will be two complex or imaginary solutions. Or if you're not using the imaginary number system, then you can just say, no solution. Uh, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you apply the quadratic formula. Thanks. Damn it.
Hello.